So with these findings we can also now talk about stability. Yeah, so if we come back to our analog function here, so A and then E2 BT here, and this was H of S was A and then 1 over S minus B. So this means that our S infinity, so our pole, is at B. So that's our pole. And obviously this is this is only the system is only stable if B is negative. Yeah. Stable if B is negative or stable in case of a complex number if the real value of B is negative. Yeah, so this gives us a classical stability diagram. So if you if we have this here, we usually call this S and we're putting our poles in here. So if we have a pole for example here and we've got another pole in a larger function like here then we know that if we have poles here, that they are stable, stable here, and that they're unstable here. So that's the real, and that's the imaginary here, and these are two poles. That's that's our pole, pole one, and that's our pole two, and so on. So as long as they're staying here, then they're both stable. And if we had poles on this side here, they were unstable. So now how is this in the digital domain? So how is now stability in the digital domain? In the digital domain? So there we can our translation rules coming quite handy. So so our h of of t a to and then e b t. So if we translate this, then it's obviously this is as h of n t a e b n t. So the same will apply for the b here. So if the b is um, negative we're getting exponential decay so there's no no surprises here so then the h of s is 1 over s minus b and so this turns into our h of z equals 1 over 1 minus and then e2 b t z to minus one. And so now with these, so we know that our poles, which are sitting here in the, in the in the um, analog system here, imaginary and real. So let's see, analog one. So that they are that that they are here. That they are stable. And this region is here unstable. So this meant that the real part of this one here defines this here. So this means the real part of our S infinity determines stability. So now we've got our translation rule here. So our z infinity is e2, and then let's call this let's call this here s infinity t. 
Yeah, so that's our analog pole. And that's our digital pole. So then we now here, when the real part is negative, it's stable. So what does it mean in terms of this translation here? So negative real part means stable. So let's just redraw this here a bit larger. So that infinity was e2 s infinity t. So this was our analog analog pole, and this was the digital one. So we know that. So if we decompose this here in E2 and then write here a real of S infinity and then plus J and the imaginary value of S infinity and then the whole thing multiplied by by t. So the real part here is the one which is crucial for stability. So this needs to be to be less less than zero to have stability. So this means in terms of the exponential so if this is here you no know, this is our real part here and this is our imaginary part here just to have it a bit bigger. And so now the now the real part of S infinity, this defines defines the radius of our exponential here. So that's the radius. And this needs to be smaller than one for stable filters. And then the imaginary part is just defining essentially the phase, something like a phase angle here. Yeah, so if this is here an angle, and this is defined here by the imaginary part of S infinity. So the imaginary part doesn't do anything in terms of stability, it is just the, just the real part of the S infinity. So if we say that that the real part needs to be smaller than 1. So this means that this region here, this shaded region in a digital filter is a region where the poles are stable. So essentially inside the unit circle. Inside the unit circle so if the poles if the poles lie inside the unit circle then the system is stable